In this session, I would like to discuss and show you how to do a C program. So this is a basic introduction to set it up the environment, some programming, and also to give you some basic things when you move on as a programmer. C programming started as I mentioned, 30, 40 years ago, actually, roughly 50 years ago. It is the very powerful programming language in the world. It used to develop Windows, Linux, like almost all operating system. It created the software as like movie creators and so on. Whenever the software needed high efficiency, we must use C. So C programming is very close to the hardware level. So using C, we can do whatever we want with the computer. As I said, C started long time ago. Dennis Rich and Stephen C. Johnson developed this language. So they are the people who wrote the first kind of Unix operating system called PDP level. So they developed this OS using the language called Assembly A, language A, and they create a new language called B using A. So however this B couldn't fit nicely to the architecture they had is this time. So they then move on to C. So Dennis and Stephen started with A, then B, finally C. In 1972, they basically introduced C and rewrote entire operating system of Unix using C. In 1973, C was powerful enough to rewrite entire Unix kernel. So after that, C was used for develop so many software. From history to right now, C is a wild. So I personally believe C is the most powerful programming language in the world from history to right now. So when you want to learn C, so there are two books I can recommend. First one is called the C programming language, or in short is called KNR. And the second one is C programming a modern approach. I recommend the second one. Both are very old books, but language is old. So those old books are good. So why don't you read those books? By learning C and using C for learn programming, you will understand exactly how computer works. You can write better programs with more efficient programs. Much easier to, much easier to learn other programming language. So like if you use C, learning other programming language are so simple. In addition to that, most of the open source projects, software projects, you see, so you can contribute to those. If you are people, you don't have a time and you want to do kind of like fast, rapid application development, C is not the good candidate. If you learn, if you want to learn programming, and if you want to kind of 
solves problems in efficient way. And if you want to learn algorithms, and if you want to learn how those algorithms code it faster and efficient method, so then you must learn C. Right. Now I want to set it up your environment to your C. So I think most of you might have Windows operating system. Few might have Unix based, like Linux operating systems. Some may have Mac. So in this course, I prefer if you use very famous C compiler called GCC, no CCC, or open source CCC. So your computer definitely may not have GCC compiler installed. So obviously GCC AC compiler is available for any operating systems and you can set it up. But instead I would like to introduce some new techno technological things which you can use while you learn programming. So then you can learn tools plus programming plus problem solving all together in one course. So in, in order to do that, I would like to give you a lightweight Linux cell to write your C programs using Docker. So let's try to understand what is Docker. So before the down of the time, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, we had big computers, computer racks, and install one computer. If you want to run a one server, we need to have one physical machine to run it. So your mail server is one machine, web server is a different machine. It's waste of hardware. Later on, maybe 10 years ago, we came the age of virtualization. So that means we managed to run different operating systems on top of one single hardware. So we call it as VMs or the virtual machines. So for example, if you have a Windows system, you can install a software called VM player and then in, on top of the VM player, you can install Ubuntu or Linux based operating system. Then your laptop or your computer has two operating system. One, maybe Windows, it's a, what we call it a host operating system. On top of the host operating system, we can have virtual operating systems or the VMs. So then in that VMs, we can run our applications. So it's something look like that. So we have single server. So in that physical server, we have a virtual servers running. In each virtual server, we have a different operating system. And then there is a physical server too. On top of that, there is a virtual server running, virtualization layer running. On top of that, there are different operating system and then application runs on top of those operating systems. So those virtual meshes might share some storage. So this particular architecture has also gone now. Instead, now we are in the age of containerization. So in the age of containerization, we are running our application in what we call it as containers. Containers are kind of lightweight VMs. Each application runs in a container. So we can run different containers on one host OS. So perhaps we have a physical server, on top of that we have a host server, then on top of that we have a VM, on top of the VM, we can we may have a contents. Or we can have physical server, then host operating system, and on top of that, 
we can have then contents like that. So containers are kind of lightweight voices or lightweight environments where we can run our software or the tools. So then we don't need heavy virtualized machines. So in the traditional virtualization architecture is very resource incentive because on top of OS, we are running a virtualization layer called hypervisor. And there we have different VMs and VMs runs on top of a virtual hardware layer and then apps. So it takes a lot of resources and very heavy. So in the container virtualization, so we have hardware and we have OS, host OS, we install the containerized virtualization layer. And on top of that, we are running containers and inside the containers, we can run applications. So you see, we cut down different resources, which was in the middle in the VM architecture. So in the container system is very low cost, efficient, and simple to use. So because of that, I use a sim, I, I will show you how to create a simple container to be used in C program. So because I prefer if you use a Linux based operating system in this course. So in case you have Windows machine, you have two options, one to install Windows, uh, remove Windows and install Linux there, but you may, you may not like that. So then the option you have is install a VM server. So, but it's very resource constrained. So because of that, let's try to install a container with GCC compiler or the C compiler, where we can use that container to practice is C programming. So like in the VMs, we use VM players. In containers, we use a software called Dockers. So in the containerization system, there are different softwares which support this containerization concepts. So the most popular open source containerization project is good Docker. So Docker is available in most of the operating system. So if you want to use containers or what you call it as Docker containers, first of all, you have to install Docker. So using the Docker, we can create different containers. I will show you how to create a GCC container to be used in this course. The next tool which you need to be practice or familiar is called JIT or the source code repositories. So when you develop software, you should be practice to use repositories, what we call JIT hub in commercial name. So those repositories, we can store our software and maintain the versions of those softwares and we can easily track them and uh, edit them. And then uh, of course, collaborate between different collaborators. So there are, so, uh, there are two popular open source software repository systems available. One is called GitHub, other one is called GitLab. Recently GitHub was acquired by Microsoft and maybe commercialize in near future. So GitLab is the one which is guaranteed to be open source right now. So I would like all of you use GitLab to store and manage your source codes. So in this course, I will give you a lot of applications. I'll write a lot of codes, you must write as well so those codes you wrote should be pushed or should be saved in this GitLab. And at the end, we will check whether you have created this GitLab account 
and you have push your codes or the ex practicals into the JITLAB. So if you want to create a JITLAB account, you can go to jitlab.com and then sign in using your email address and you can log into the JITLAB. After that, you can create your own repositories. You can clone our repos my repository and you can create your own repository, push those repositories and so on. So maybe you try to learn JIT and the source code which I am using in this course will continuously push into this JIT account. So I will let you know how to access this JIT account today. Right. Let's see step by step. How do you use Docker? And how to use JIT? And let's set it up our programming environment right now to start learn programming. To start learn programming. So first of all, let's set it up the environment. So So, so I prefer you use terminal, doesn't matter Windows terminal or any Linux terminal. So in the terminal, first of all, you need to create a Docker. So for that, you have to go to the website called Docker, www.docker.com and Download the Docker and install that. You press get start and say download and pick your operating system. If you are using Windows, Windows, I'm using Mac, then Mac, and then you download it, Docker desktop, install that. So then you are ready to use Docker in your computer. After that, you go to the JIT, actually JITLAB, JITLAB.com and create the account and log into the JITLAB account. So I have logged into my JITLAB account. So here you may see the repository I have created called IS1001 that consists of the resources of this course. So right now, you don't have anything. For example, in the lecture one, it's kind of empty. There is a file anyway. It, when, you, when I open it, it's just a text file, as you may see, but nothing important. But when I move on, I will push the resources to that. So, but in the parent directory of this, so I have put some readme files, which includes the docker command which might be useful for you in addition to that you may see a file called docker file so that is very important file so what you can do first you download this docker file using this and put it into some directory so for example i have put that docker file in this directory you may see this docker file is available in this directory, right? So if you wish, you can put these two lines in the Docker file. The file I'm using here, you see there are no these two lines. These two lines are not available. But you can, when you download that, there are two lines available. available. That basically links that uh, Docker engine to GitLab account. So for that, you can configure this with your email address and your username. When you create a JITLAB account, so you have to give your user email and you have to create your username. You put that to here, this to here, download the file. You download the file and edit it and put that or as you delete this too, right? And then you may have a file called Docker. 
So you have to name that file as Docker. So what I'm going to show you actually using that file, how to create a lightweight VM or what you call it as Docker container. This container consists of GCC compiler and a debugger called GDB. I will introduce debugger later on and the JIT and the simple editor called Vim or the VI. So, so for that, building that container, I say I want to build GCC base and I run those commands in order to create this container called GCC. So, so you start scratch, you create a directory, wherever, you download this file and put it there. And then you see the commands you want to run in the file called Docker. That file is available here. So you can download and that file over to the same folder, download it to the same folder, then you can see the commands you want to execute. The first command you have to execute is this, it's, it's build what we call it as docker contain. So what you have to do, you type docker build minus ct and give a name for the container that is GCC container image and say dot. It's find a file called docker file. Docker file consists of what you want to do. And docker command will automatically fetch the content from the internet and create what we call it as docker content. First time when you run that docker build command, it created docker image called GCC on your local machine. It might take some time to fetch that images to your machine. So obviously you need to have internet. So since I have run that command previously, it only checked the updates and execute in a very short time. But when you run it at the first time, it may take time. Okay, fine, run that. So then you may have created a Docker container in your machine. After that, you have to run this command. To start this container, running on your PC. So it said docker run, using minus V option, we can map a directory of this lightweight virtual machine into the local file system. So for example, if you use a VM virtual machine in your computer, this is isolated separate computer. So in the VM, we, there is a separate file system you cannot access the files of the guest OS using this VM. But if you use a Docker, so you can map the Docker image file system into the local file system. So, and whatever you edit in the local file system, reflect in that image, plus image will see the local file system. So if you want to do that, so you have to use minus V option while you are running that Docker image. So in the first command, created the image. Second command actually start that Docker contain. The second command what I'm going to execute is Docker run. This map my UCSC, VC, VSC, IS directory as a home directory of the container. And I name this container as GCC and I use the image called GCC to run, start this container. So when I run that, you see there is an error because I already run that container previously. So maybe I can remove using docker rm gcc, rm is remove the running container called gcc. So it's removed, then I can rerun it. So it create the Docker content. You see immediately I got a Linux root prompt for the Unix root prompt. So this contains a compiler called GCC. You see it's there. 
NGD ni kita ke uh, debugger I exit control D right and it has the editor plus it has JIT command JIT right to access this online repositories like GitLab we need JIT so when I See the file system, you see it's a Linux based file system. So I might map my root file system into this. So when I go to home directory, it is basically the directory where I store my slides and the resources of these lectures. So it's my host directory mapped to the container. So you can use any host directory. So like that here, and then call and, and give the and map slash slash home so then the, this is container directory map into this local directory so it when you run that command it do like that right so after that what i would like to do is i would like to fetch this repository so for example if you do that in your computer it's better you clone that directory into your machine. For that, you copy this URL, cloning URL, and in this Docker prompt, you go to the home directory. Now you are at the home directory, and then execute git, um, git, git clone command. It. Oh. and then URL of my JIT account. So time to time, you have to update that. I will show how to do that. So then you may get new programs where I uploaded to this repository. So I clone it, right? After I clone it, so in that, you see there is a directory created called IS1001, it's my repository name. So I go to this directory. So you can see the resources here, everything is, all the resources copy to your local file system. You may see that. So, so your environment is now ready to do the program. Let's see, let's try to write a first simple program. So you go to the lecture one, and there I put the simple file called ibo1c. So let's see what it has. It just has hello. This is not a program. So let's write a program. So for that, I use a editor called VM. So I type vi and the file name where I want to edit. So if I want to delete some line available, you can type twice dd, it will delete it, and you can type i and it may insert. So then you can insert a test to this file. So what I want to do is write a C program. So the first line of the C usual C program it's called include. Include will tell the system to include standard libraries where are required in the basic program. The standard library called STDIOH required in most of the C program. So in some programs might include different different libraries. After that, the program execution start from the method called main and the structure of the main method is something like that. So we say int, this is called integer, it's return value. I'll let you know what it is later on. And we need to have a method called main, that's function called main. That is the function which executes. And after executing this, 
it will return an integer. So I type like that return zero. So this main function will return zero after it executes. Then what I would like to do is in this simple program is just to print something for that. So there is a command called print it. And you, within the bracket, you type what you want to print. So I want to print I go on here. After I print that, I want to tell the system I would like to go to the next line. So slash n tells about that to the system and I close the bracket and put a semicolon. Semicolon marks the end of the instruction. So this simple C program has two instructions. One is say print a word called I go on on the terminal and then tells return zero. So that's how a very simple C program look like. If I want to save that, I need to type colon, that is, sorry, I need to type escape and then colon and say type WQ, write and execute, uh, write and quit. So it comes there. So then you have the program for live one. Using cat command, you can see the content. You see the program is there now. So you have to compile. So in order to compile, you run a command called GCC and then your program name. When you want to write such program names, you don't need to type everything. You type few letters like that and press tab character. So then program name will be typed or printed on the terminal. Then you press enter, it get compiled. So when you see the directory now, then we have our program or called source file and we have a file called a.out. a.out is our executable file. So you run that. So you see, you got the print called i for one on the terminal. So that is your first program. Okay, after you write it, let's say you want to store it in the JIT lab, what you should do. So first of all, you need to add the program, this program to the repository if it is a new. Since this file is there, you just need to commit the change. So for that, if it is a new file, you have to say JIT, JIT add and the file name. Actually, this is already there, so then you don't need to type add command. Instead, what you have to do is, you have to type command for g commit and the file name. So when you type commit, so it shows this file is modified and then you want to put there, so if you have any comments to the others, so you can type that here. So maybe I say this is my first comment. This is again VI editor. So I type this is my first comment. And then press escape button and colon and then WQ will commit it to the repository. So that commit, it's stored in the local version of the repository. So when I go there, you see, still I have this file, which has the word hello, not the program I modified locally. So if I want to store that local version or push that local version back to this online repository, I must, I must type git push command. So then it asks your username. So my username is Kazun D. So when it, then it asks the password, I type that. 
so it automatically push to this online repository let me now re reload this file for live one c you see the program is available now in the online so the others can then use this in in group of people develops the software so such repositories are very important so we can share the codes with the others so now my local repository here and the global repository on the internet it's the same so i can check that i say git pull pulling that so it's already up to date that means both are similar so when you use my repository and clone it you may not be able to push it back to my repository here because it's not owned by it's not owned by you it's owned by me so what you can do is you can after logging to the gitlab you create your own repository initiate your own repository and then add the code to the repository so there are plenty of tutorials in the internet showing how to do that then color it those tutorial and start using J. So actually this updates goes here and there. For example, if you do any changes here, for example, I can edit online as well. So for example, if I want to edit this file, so maybe I say I go on cousin and then I can commit it here online repository. Everybody see that. So then if I say git pull, it pull it back to my local file system. So let me show it. So you see now it has the different or the same code here, which I edited here on the on online and push pull it to the local system. So if I want to compile that, I have to run GCC again it's get compiled and then I run the program it executes so that's how we can simply use it to collaborate each other so the objective of this course is to learn programming programmers should be practice to use docker plus J so from the beginning try to use those tools so if i repeat what you should do is you create a gitlab account and clone my git repository into your local file system in order to do that first of all you go to the docker.com step one and download the docker step two you copy the content of this file docker file put it into a folder in your local machine and execute a command called docker build minus t gcc dot gcc is the name of your docker content then step four you run the docker container using this command docker run minus v give a local file uh, directory name which you you want to map to the docker image home and then using minus minus name you name that at, name that docker image here i am naming it called gcc and then using it option you can show the image so then docker image will start so after you run the docker image next time when you want to run that you don't want to run this command instead you run docker start aigcc for example i will show you so for here so if you want to uh, 
I let, I am on the Docker, I exit that. So now I am on the local file system. So if I want to go back to the Docker image, which I installed in this machine, I say Docker start, uh, Docker start minus AIGCC. Docker start minus AIGCC. So if you give a different name for the image, you have to use that name here. Right? You get come to the same machine. So you when you change your directory to home, you may see all the file system. So this is the directory I have flown. And my program is installed in the lecture one port. So that's it. So in this session, I want to teach you all the I want to teach you how to use Docker and how to use JIT. So you should follow some tutorials online and be fluent on those technologies. Then I use my GCC Docker image to write a very simple program, as you see, called IBO1C and I compile it and run it. And I showed you how to run a simple uh, uh, program, right? So now your environment is ready to fly. So from the next lecture onwards, I will teach you how to use C and how to solve problems using C. So let's stop the lecture for the day. From next session, we will be able to use the environment you set it up to write C programs. So follow the follow all the instruction on this session and set it up your environment and be ready for the next session in next week. Thank you very much.